Should you put your money on red or in the stock market? I'll tell you how to invest. Should you play roulette or buy stocks? This is the University of the Netherlands. Investing in a stock market is risky. Maybe you have a feeling that it is like betting in a casino. So today we're going to see if these two things are anything alike, and we're going to discuss the major differences between gambling in a casino and investing in the stock market. As a starting point, we're going to use the game of roulette. I'm going to place my money on black. If the ball lands on black, my money will be doubled. But if it lands on red or on zero, or that in this case, that uh, blue U, I will lose everything. So let's see what happens. Unsurprisingly, I lost. Maybe you know that casino games aren't fair. So let us talk about what it means that a game is not fair. As you can see on the roulette table in Europe, you have 37 numbers. 18 are black, 18 are red, and then there's the green zero. If you put your money on black, there's a 48.6% chance that you win. A game being unfair means that if you play the game a lot of times, on average, you will lose money. If the roulette game would be fair, you would walk into the casino with 100 euros, and on average, you would walk out of the casino still with 100 euros. But now my question to you is this. Would you pay 100 euros for a game that lets you win 200 euros with a 50% probability, and you get zero euros also with a 50% probability? So you take a risk, but you exactly break even. I'm certain that none of you would do that. And that fact that you and investors in the stock market are not willing to pay the average outcome leads us to an important concept, namely the risk premium. Let's go through an example in order to understand that concept. Let us assume that the stock tomorrow is either worth 110 or 90. How much are you going to be willing to pay for that stock? If the game would be fair, that stock would cost 100 euros. Because there is a 50-50% chance of the 110 and 90, and on average you break even. But on the stock market, you're not going to pay 100. You're going to pay, for example, 95. And this 95 means that you get a positive return by investing into the stock. You do not exactly break even, but on average, you will win. And since you have a higher chance of making money instead of losing, this generates a positive risk premium. Strictly speaking, the risk premium is the average return of the stock minus the risk-free rate that you get in the bank, because these are the two decisions that you can take. You can put your money without risk on the bank, or you can take risk and put the money in the stock market. If you take risk, you want to be compensated for it. And the compensation is the risk premium. Now, this is the first major difference between investing in the stock market and gambling in the casino. In the casino, you will lose money on average. In the stock market, you will gain money on average. But how are you going to invest in the stock market? The first thing that you can do is you choose a company because you have a gut feeling which company is going to be the next Apple or the next Amazon. And indeed, some people get lucky and they make a lot of money by choosing these companies. But you can also get lucky at a casino. So let's look at the risks that you take when you're investing your money in stocks by using three simple examples. The first example that we're looking at is a company that was traded on the German stock market. It was a promising German company that works in the tech sector, in the financial technology sector. The company I'm talking about is Wirecard, and this was a tech darling on the German stock exchange. At first, it was doing really well in the stock markets. However, as you perhaps know, the company was involved in one of the largest fraud cases in German history. Investing in this company in March 2010 until today would yield you on average minus 0.18% per day. That means that just 
because you have a positive expected return at the beginning, the outcome does not need to be positive. You're getting a risk premium, and you're only getting a risk premium because you're holding risk. An initial investment of 100 euros in March 2010 into Wirecard would be worth about 35 cents today. Let's look at a second example. You don't want to invest into a tech company. You want to invest into a large multinational corporation. Let's go back to 1980, and we put our money into General Electric, which was a very large US American company. That investment from 1980 until today would have earned you on average 0.034% per day, which is greater than zero. But is it any good? So let's look at a third example. Let's look at Monster Beverages. This is surprisingly one of the best performing stock on the US market. Since 1990, this stock has returned on average 0.097% per day, which is almost three times as much as General Electric. And although these numbers don't sound like much, they can generate widely different outcomes. This is because your return is paid on the larger and larger investments that you have. Let's take a first example in order to make that concept clear. Let's assume that you have a very large return of 10% every day. On the first day, you put 100 euros into the market. On the second day, these 100 euros is worth 110 euros. On the next day, you're going to get 10% on the 110. So your amount is going to increase to 121, and so on and so forth. In the graph, you see that over time, this would have a rapidly increasing value of your portfolio. Obviously, in the stock markets, the returns are not that large. So you do not get 10%, but in case of General Electric, you get 0.034. And in case of Monster Beverages, you get 0.097. The differences don't seem that much. But if we'd invest 100 euros in 1990 in General Electric, that investment would be valued at 1,652 1, euros today. The same investment of 100 euros in 1990 into Monster Beverages would have the value of over 264,000 today. So now, after seeing this example, we now need to answer the question how to invest in the stock market. Obviously, ideally, you want to pick the monster beverages, the companies that turn out to have these very large returns in the future. But how are you going to select these companies? Well, the bad news is that it's almost impossible to select these companies ex ante. So you might have heard from the monkey throwing bananas at stock charts. And then the stocks that these bananas hit were chosen in order to form a portfolio. And then that portfolio was compared against the portfolio by professional investors. Surely you think that these professional investors would have performed better than the monkey randomly throwing bananas. But that was not what we observed. We observed that the monkey did not perform worse than the professional investors. You simply don't know which company is going to succeed. You might as well bet all your money on 10 on the roulette table, because you also don't know which color is going to go up after the wheel was spun. So now I'm going to explain you with some norm numbers how hard it actually is to pick a stock. JP Morgan, which is a large American investment bank, published interesting results on stock picking in US markets. They used the stocks in the Russell 3000 index for their analysis. A stock market index is nothing else than the weighted average price of all stocks in that index. Larger companies receive larger weights, smaller companies get smaller weights. And the Russell 3000 represents the 3,000 largest publicly traded companies in the United States, which is almost all of the stock market. If the index goes up, it means that the weighted average price of the combined stocks go up. Now, what does JP Morgan find? JP Morgan finds that 42% of the stocks actually lose you money, which means that it doesn't need to be as bad as Wirecard, but these are the Wirecards of this world. 66% of the stocks actually perform worse than the index. 
And 10% of the stocks, these are the mega winners. These are the very successful stock performers. These are the monster beverages of this world. Now, you might be thinking your goal is just to invest into the 10% mega winners. But this is like saying, I'm just going to put my money on red when it will come up. You will simply not know which company is the mega winner of tomorrow. So now the safest option that you can have is you're going to invest into a lot of the stocks, all of them for that matter. And then you're going to get the positive risk premium through to the fact that some stocks will lose, other stocks will win, but the average is usually positive. That's the idea of holding a diversified portfolio. You're not betting on one stock because the index represents the entire economy. Let's go back to our casino. At the beginning of the lecture, we learned that by going all in on black, you will lose money in the end. Investing is, generally speaking, a better option. You will take risk, but on average, your return is positive. Now your question might be, but how can I split up the money that I have into all these stocks? And that is where an exchange-traded fund comes in, or an ETF. Let's say you have 100 euros to invest, and you want to invest in 100, 1,000, or 3,000 stocks in order to get the positive risk premium and having a diversified portfolio. You are not going to be able to buy the 100, 1,000, or 3,000 stocks, but you can buy part of a fund that does own all of these stocks, and then you still get the same outcome. So how does a classic ETF work? Say you want to invest into a large diversified portfolio that duplicates the stock market. The Russell 3000, or another example would be the MSCI World, which is an index that includes the 1,546 largest corporation in the world. The ETF is created by a financial institution that buys all, or at least close to all, of the stocks in the index. Let's say that financial institution invests 1 billion euros and buys the stock in the same proportion as the index. After that, this financial institution creates 10 million shares of that ETF, and it sells these shares on the stock market. Each share will cost 100 euros. So if you have these 100 euros to invest, you can simply buy a share of the ETF, and now you are investing into all of the shares in the MSCI world or in the Russell 3000, with only one transaction. So let's look at the outcome of investing into the US stock market in the last 40 years. That is, from 1982 until the end of 2021. This investment generated on average a return of about 0.044% per day. Again, these numbers sound small, but an investment of 100 euros in this widely diversified portfolio would be worth 8,847 euros at the end of 2021. You see that you would avoid this catastrophic outcome of investments like Wirecard. Apart from giving you access to a diversified portfolio, the other benefit of investing via an ETF is that these have low costs and are therefore the best way for you to collect the risk premium on capital markets. After all, you don't need to pay the middleman if it's not there. Circling back to our question, is investing in stocks like playing roulette? It depends on how you invest. If you invest into one company, you could as well put all your money on 10. But if you want to have the highest chance of winning, you should bet on the casino, or in the stock market, invest in a diversified portfolio. You won't win big in the near future, but in the long run, you will make a return. Thank you for watching.